Cú Chulainn was one of the greatest warriors from the legends of ancient Ireland. A demigod of great strength and power. However, he was also one who was never satisfied with his limits, and was always looking for a new challenge or ways to improve. He heard tales of a great warrior woman and martial arts instructor called Scahawk, who lived on the Isle of Skye in Scotland, and soon made plans to travel to her island to become her student. While he was training with Scahawk, Cú Chulainn also met another warrior woman called Aoife, who was Scahawk's rival. It is said Cú Chulainn helped end their rivalry, and in doing so also had a love affair with Aoife. When his training with Scahawk was complete, and as he was due to travel back to Ireland, Aoife told him she was pregnant with their son. Cú Chulainn was delighted, however, he could not stay in Scotland. He had to return home to the army of the King of Ulster. He told Aoife to name his son Cunla, and left her a red golden ring, and said that when the boy was big enough that the ring would fit on his thumb without falling off, he should travel to Ireland and find his father. Cú Chulainn returned home, and soon after he married Emer, a woman he had been pledged to since even before his journey to Scotland. They say, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Never was this more true than for Aoife, when she found out the man she thought was her lover had married another not long after he left her. She vowed revenge, and that she would get it through her son Cunla. She kept her knowledge of Cú Chulainn's marriage and the hatred she now felt for him a secret, even from Cunla. She raised him to be a warrior and even sent him to train with Scahawk so that he might become his father's equal, until the day came that he had grown enough for the red golden ring to finally fit his thumb without falling off. She told Cunla it was time for him to set off to Ireland and find his father. However, she did not give Cunla his father's name, explaining he would know his father by the hero's light. Before he left, she also placed three geisha, or curses, on him. He was to never turn his back on his journey. He was to never refuse any challenge. And he was to never give his name unless bested in a fight. Conla's boat landed on a strand near Dundalk. And as it happened, Kion Kobar the then King of Ulster, and whose army Cú Chulainn was part of, was also at the Strand. When the King saw the young boy disembark his boat, dressed in the finest chain mail and carrying sword and shield, he sent his messenger to greet the boy and find out if it was war or peace that had brought him to Ireland. The messenger approached Conla and first asked his name, but the boy refused. The messenger explained that it was the King of Ulster who had sent him, and that as a traveller arriving in Ireland, he would be honour bound to give his name to the King. But no matter the reason given, be it law, politeness or honour, the geisha on him surpassed all, and he remained steadfast that he would not give his name, nor would he be leaving Ireland. When the messenger returned with this news to the king, he was insulted and angered that such a youth could show such disrespect towards him. He ordered several of his knights to approach the boy and either get his name or make him leave Ireland by force. They approached Cunla who explained that if they wished to fight, he would gladly accept. They drew their weapons and began to attack but they were surprised by the skill and strength of the young boy as he began to easily disarm and dispatch all of the knights. The king realised this was no ordinary boy and asked Conal Kjarnock, who was second only to Cú Chulainn in the army, to defend the king's honour. Conal accepted and approached the boy and he gave him one last chance explaining he was one of Ireland's greatest warriors and that there was no need for them to fight if the boy would just give up his name. I cannot give you my name, and I will not refuse your challenge, exclaimed the youth. Cunnell gave the boy a greater fight than any of the previous knights, but come the end, 
it was Connell who lay defeated, bloody in the sands of the Strand. The King then sent word to have Cú Chulainn brought to the Strand. Strange as it may have seemed to him, he realised that although it appeared just a boy, he would need his greatest warrior to bring him to heel. When he heard of what happened and even Connell Kiarna could fall into the stranger, Cú Chulainn raced from Dundalk down to the Strand, looking forward to this new challenge for himself. When he approached the boy, Cú Chulainn was impressed with his standing and spoke to him asking once more for his name and warning that should they fight, he would win and he could not promise that the boy would live. Connla explained that Connell Kiarnock was also so sure of his own victory, but yet even though he did not know this was his father standing before him, he felt the need to explain why he could not give his name, telling Cú Chulainn of the geisha placed on him and that to give his name, he must first be defeated in battle. Understanding now that the boy's stubbornness was not his own fault, however, the king's honour was still at stake, and Cú Chulainn could not allow the boy to leave unchallenged. Up and down the strand they fought, the clashing of their swords became like thunder rolling over the land into Ireland. It had been a long time since Cú Chulainn had found himself pitted against such an able opponent. They appeared equal in skill, and to the surprise of Cú Chulainn and all those watching, the young boy was able to match him, blow for blow, move for move. As the battle dragged on, Cú Chulainn began to grow angry that he was being matched by a mere boy until eventually his war spasm took hold. Some also called it his hero's light though Hero's Light was a very nice way of describing the transformation it caused in Cú Chulainn. It was a monstrous change, his limbs and joints convulsed and his body made a terrible twist inside his skin so that his shins and calves switched places in his legs. His muscles grew and bulged so much that his skin could barely contain them and began to tear. His jaw widened and you could see his organs on the inside. His hair on his head and body stood up and became sharp and strong like spears. As he watched in horror as Cú Chulainn transformed before him, Cunla realised this was the hero's light his mother told him of and that the man he was fighting was actually his father. Before Cunla could even react to what he had just witnessed, Cú Chulainn reached for his legendary spear, the Gea Bolog, the spear of a thousand barbs, and drove it deep into Conla, where it splintered apart and pierced every one of his internal organs. As Conla fell to the ground dying, he held up his thumb showing Cú Chulainn the red golden ring on it. On seeing it, Cú Chulainn realised this boy was his son Conla. His war spasm faded and he returned to normal. Tears fell from his eyes as he picked up his son and cradled him in his arms. They both cursed Aoife, realising that she had sent Cunla not just to find his father, but to destroy him, either by having him kill his own father, or to make his father have to live with knowing he killed his only son. Cú Chulainn called the men of the Red Branch Knights down to the Strand and asked them to introduce themselves to his son. Each man gave Cunla their name, and after they had all greeted him, Cú Chulainn drew his sword and slit Cunla's throat so that he would not suffer a slow death anymore. He gave out a loud cry that shook the ground and then sang a great lament wishing that it had been any other man that had killed his son so that he could at least deal with his grief through revenge. The king then began to worry that at any moment Cullen's grief could turn to rage and that he could turn his war spasm against his fellow knights at any moment. He turned to his druid and asked if there was anything he could do to prevent this. The druid cast a spell on Cú Chulainn that, if he wanted to turn his grief into vengeance, he would see the waves of the ocean as attacking enemies. And so he did. For three days and three nights, without rest nor food, Cú Chulainn raged and fought the ocean waves until eventually he collapsed from exhaustion. As for Aoife, 
When she heard the result of her vengeance, she wept, bitter tears, every day, till the day she died, having now lost both Cú Cullen and her son Cunla forever. <laughs>